Ann Kiefer. I'm a dental hygienist and I'm director of education for Crosstex. I'd like to talk about an important point in sterility assurance. What do you do if a test fails? The first thing is not to panic. You need to go through and review your procedure in a very thoughtful order to see if we can figure out exactly what caused that test failure. The first thing that we have to think about, believe it or not, is related to human error. Because the number one cause of failure of biological monitoring is overloading of the sterilizer. So you want to make sure that you don't have it overloaded because if you have to get through all these layers to get to the spore test, that's going to be one reason that it fails. So what we want to do is to make sure that we have our pouches or packages adequately spaced a quarter inch between each one, not overlapping, and that we've got that spore strip or the vial either in the center, over the drain, or in the front by the door. The next thing we want to think about is did we have improper loading of the packages? Have we overloaded the packages, put too many instruments in there? Do we have poor steam quality? What could that poor steam quality be caused by? We call that wet steam. When you're boiling a pot of water, you see a vapor cloud. If you look above the top of the water line and below that vapor cloud, there's an empty space there. If I would put my hand there, I would immediately pull it out because that's the saturated steam. So if we have wet steam, which is like the vapor cloud, you need to go back and check a couple things on your sterilizer itself. One of the first things to look at is the gasket. Do we see any cracks in the gasket itself? Do we see any drying? Do we see any buildup? If that's the case, you may have a poor seal on the door, which could relate in poor steam quality. The other thing to think about is, did you run the right cycle? If you're using packaged instruments, either in a pouch or cassettes that are wrapped, you need to make sure that you are using the wrapped package cycle. So you could have run it at the wrong temperature or the wrong time. And last but not least, it's a simple question of, did you turn the sterilizer on? Did you actually run the cycle? Aside from human error, the other thing that we have to look at are equipment failures. Do we have a problem with the valve or the filter? Have you been conducting the appropriate periodic or the routine maintenance on the sterilizer? Then last but not least, was there actually a power interruption during the process? If so, you need to start an entirely new cycle with a new sterilizer strip or a vial. When we're talking about in-office testing, one of the first things you're going to want to look at is that blue strip to see if it's changed colors to black, which would indicate that that test has been processed and is now ready for incubation. Was the unit actually plugged in? Did it get to temperature? Did you allow it to incubate for the right period of time? Some other simple things may be, once you've run it through the sterilizer, did you remember that the vial has to be crushed before it's actually put into the incubator? Was the problem that you actually crushed the vial before you put it into the sterilizer? Because that would also result in a failed test. Finally, let's talk about some of the issues with the mail-in. We talked about that the control is always going to be in the sealed side of an envelope that says, do not open. What if someone should open it and they take the control test, which is going to be in red, and they actually run the control test, put it back into the test side of the envelope. The black test wasn't run, but it was put back into the control side. That would be considered an invalid and that test could not be processed. One of the advantages of using a mail-in service is that you're going to receive a personal call within 24 hours of a failure so that we can review the procedures that may have caused the problem. When you have determined either the exact cause for the failure or you've had the unit repaired or serviced, before you can put that sterilizer back into service after the second consecutive failure, the CDC requires that you do three consecutive biological monitoring tests that pass. Remember that we should always do with a tabletop sterilizer. It should be with a full chamber. You would not want to run it the first load of the morning. Make sure that you record all three test results. And then once you've achieved three passes, that sterilizer can be placed back into service.